my dear brothers and sisters let us open our hearts to accept god's word god is waiting to talk to every one of us let the word of god bear fruit the fruit of the holy spirit the fruit of love and peace and joy and patience and kindness and goodness and self control and faithfulness and gentleness o oh god there is a lot of sadness in my heart the painful memories of the unfortunate events that occurred to me in my past the memories of guilt because of the sins i committed all these sad memories haunt to me all the time lord let your mercy flow into me to heal me to forgive me to set me free from this bondage of evil oh god you revealed yourself as a compassionate god waiting to forgive waiting to heal with great faith in your mercy we come to you oh god to listen to your voice and to be healed by your love amen my dear brothers and sisters there has been a constant search in the human mind to understand who god is what god means to man and what god does to us sages of all cultures and scholars of philosophical trends down the years have come to their own conclusions and they have gathered followers to propagate their idea of god some of them very inadequate others very misleading they have managed to gather followers to propagate their ideas but then when god came down to us in jesus christ and god revealed who he is it's a beautiful concept evolving before us let me read for you from the gospel according to st luke chapter 4 verses 16 onwards Jesus came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the sabbath day he stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor he has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind to let the oppressed 
go free. And to proclaim our ear acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. And dear friends, Jesus goes to the synagogue and he was beginning to teach. And we are told he took the scroll of the scriptures and unrolled the scroll because he wanted to give a revelation, a very clear knowledge what he was come for. And he quoted prophet Isaiah. Prophet Isaiah spoke at length about the Savior, what the Savior would do for us when he comes from God. And there, Jesus found that passage from Isaiah chapter 61. And he read out, I'm come from God, anointed by the Holy Spirit. I'm come for a purpose. And what is the purpose? To give the gospel good news to the poor. Who are the poor? When the Bible speaks about the poor, the Bible means those waiting upon God, those who do not depend on themselves for the joy of living, those who look for God and those who are waiting to do God's will all the time. The Anavim Yahweh, the poor of God, and for them, Jesus said, there is good news. And what's the good news? Liberty to captives, sight to the blind, and freedom for the oppressed. Three words are used. Captives and oppressed and the blind. The three words are very important in the context of the prophecy of Isaiah. Now, the captives will find freedom, the oppressed will find release, and the blind will see. When we understand this gospel passage in the context of the prophecy of Isaiah. There's something beautiful. This is what Jesus has come. This is what God has come to do for us, for every one of us. Freedom for the captives. Who is a captive? Who is a slave? You don't judge who is a slave by looking at the hands to see whether there are chains binding the hands. Look at the heart. Is the heart bound by chains of sin? Jesus said, John 8, 34, a sinner is a slave of sin. A sinner is bound by the power of sin. When one is bound by the power of sin, that power will always oppress the person. There will be pressures, temptations. Temptations 
dragging a sinful person to sin again and again. And in the process, the captive will justify the sin. Saying, sin is not sin. That's blindness. You don't judge whether anyone is blind by looking at the eyes. Look at the heart. What Jesus said, John 3, 19, this is the contamination. This is the curse of the humankind. What's the curse? What's the contamination? Light is come, but men and women opted for darkness. A clear decision in favor of darkness, of sin. Three layers of evil. Slavery, oppression, and blindness. This is what happens to all of us. My dear brothers and sisters, you don't look at others and see whether he is blind, he is captive. You and I, in this season of Lent, we need to look into our own hearts. Am I enslaved to evil addictions? Am I oppressed? Are these pressures of evil pressing me down in such a way I'm not able to rise up? Have I justified my sinful postures? Three layers of sin that could be found in my heart and many brothers and sisters in your heart. St. Paul beautifully pictures for us the cross section of a sinful heart. Paul says, I don't understand what is happening to me. Romans chapter 7, verses 15 onwards. I don't understand what is happening to me. I want to be good. It is good that I want to do, but I end up doing the evil. Does anyone want to be bad? Does anyone want to do something wrong? All of us want to be good. We are determined to do good. But at the end of the day, what are we doing? I realize I have done evil. There is guilt in my heart. I did something wrong. I want to to be loving, but I end up hating others. I want to be gentle, but I, I shout, I scream. I get angry with people. I'm irritated all the time. I want to be patient, but I'm short-tempered. But I want, I want right now, if someone does not do it for me, I shout, I scream, I make his life miserable. I want to pray. But I'm not able to pray. I want to study. Well, I have great expectations of my future. I want to do hard work, but I just can't get up from bed. But I look at a TV screen. Well, I'm sitting there for a long time, but I, I must be doing some work at home, but I can't get up and do this. Helplessness, the pain of helplessness. I'm not able to do what I want to do. And St. Paul goes further to analyze what happens to such a person. When I understand there are powers of evil in my heart, when I understand I am oppressed by these evil powers, I need to know, I need to know there are evil forces, evil forces dwelling right here in my heart. I'm a man sold to sin, Paul laments, sold 
to sin. There are powers of evil holding me captive. I'm a slave. I'm oppressed. Wretched man that I am. Paul laments. Wretched man that I am. My brothers and sisters, in the moments of prayer, when we look into our hearts, we would realize this is true. This is true of me and you. Slavery, oppression, and blindness. You know, every year, year after year, the Jewish rabbis read out this passage in synagogues. And they would tell the people, God is waiting to save us. We are enslaved. We are oppressed. We are blind. We are sick. The powers of sin are destroying us. And God will not abandon us. Let's pray for the Savior to come. And they would cry out to God, oh God, rain down the Savior. Let the clouds tear open and let Savior come down to us. But then, when Jesus quoted this prophecy of Isaiah, at the end of the quotation, Jesus said, today, in your hearing, this scripture passage is come true. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the beauty of this first sermon of Jesus. Jesus is revealing to us what God does to us in the moments of our slavery, in the moments of our sinfulness, what God is waiting to do for us. Often we think of God as rewarding the virtuous and punishing the wicked. But here, Jesus is revealing to us the face of a God waiting, waiting for you and for me to turn to him. And when we turn to him, what does God do? He's waiting to set us free from all enslaving powers of evil. He's waiting to give us release from all the pressures of sin. He's waiting to open our eyes, the eyes of our heart, to see the truth, the truth of God. In your hearing, this prophecy is come true. Jesus is offering himself as the Savior. The Savior sent by the Father, anointed by the Holy Spirit, to fulfill this mission, this mission of liberating, of saving every one of us. A great hope. Dear brothers and sisters, a great hope for every one of us to believe in Jesus, to become a poor in front of Jesus, opening my heart, confessing my sin, coming to him in faith, revealing to him my helplessness, my enslavement, and waiting for salvation to flow from the heart of Jesus into our hearts. And this is the good news. I will not be destroyed in my sinfulness. Whatever be the enslavement that oppresses me, I will not be destroyed. All I need to do is to go to Jesus, surrender my life to him. I remember a young man came to me. He said he was an IT engineer. And he said, Father, I come home late, very tired, just wanting to go to bed and catch some sleep. But you know, Father, he told me, you know, Father, 
when I come into my room and see the computer on the table. A computer with an internet connection. I automatically sit by the side of the table. My hands will automatically move on the keyboard. And the dirty sites of pornography would appear on the monitor of the computer. When I look at them, I would know, oh, wrong, dirty. I should not be looking at them. This is wrong, dehumanizing. But, Father, I will never be able to shut down the computer. From the bad to the worse, from the worst to the worst, from the worst to the more worst, is there a word like that? Never satisfied. Never satisfied with the craving of lust. He said, Father, I would go to bed very late, but then I would never be able to sleep well. When I lie down and close my eyes, all those atrocious scenes that I saw on the computer would come back to me, haunting me. I would get up in the morning more tired than when I went to bed. I would hurry up washing myself, he said. I'm late and go and sit at the breakfast table. That's when I would see my darling younger sister coming for breakfast all dressed up to go to college. When I look at my sister, I would, I would painfully understand I have lost the eyes of a brother. I'm not able to look at my sister with the eyes of a brother. All those terrible sights that I gulped down in the night would come back to me superimposed on the body of my sister. I would feel terrible. I would make a decision never to do it again, but that night, the nights to come, I do the same thing. I'm tired and upset. I'm not able to live like this. I'm desperate. I tried my best to come out of this. I'm not able to. I told him, my brother, I understand your pain. God understands the pain of helplessness. You are a slave. A slave cannot come out of slavery by himself. No. A slave has to be set free by the master. And I read out to him this passage. I told him, my friend, this passage is for you. After reading out the passage from prophet Isaiah, Jesus said, today in your hearing, this word has come true. I told him, the Lord is telling you now, my brother, you now, today, at this moment, this promise is being fulfilled for you in Jesus. Crying aloud, he asked me, tell me, Father, what shall I do? I told him, my friend, surrender your life to Jesus. Offer your body to Jesus, your hands, your eyes, your legs offer 
your life to Jesus. Be a slave of Jesus. I told him, now you're a slave of the power, evil power of lust. This evil power of lust is enslaving you, oppressing you, blinding you and destroying you. When you become a slave of Jesus, he will set you free. That's what Jesus has come for. He will set you free. But then it must be a continuous, a constant process. Surrendering your life to God. When you open the door, you must ask Jesus, Jesus, you are my master. You tell me where I must go. When you open the computer, you must ask Jesus, Lord, what sides shall I see? I'm your slave. And my life belongs to you. I'm here to obey. Every moment, every moment, you will hear the Lord inspiring you, telling you what to do. Well, a month after, I met him. This young man said, Father, a couple of times I did fall, but I have a great confidence, a great confidence in my God. My God will set me free. My God is setting me free. I have a great confidence. I live for my Jesus. I live for my Jesus. What St. Paul said, quoting St. Paul, he said, for me, life is Jesus. The word of God is my constant companion. My dear brothers and sisters, a great good news for every one of us. Jesus is there for us. He's come not to punish, not to destroy, however sinful I am. He's come to save. All that is needed is to accept him as the Lord and Savior. Turn to him at every moment of life. Make my life a life for Jesus, centered on Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for revealing your great mercy to us. Jesus, we thank you for waiting to save us. We ask your pardon for every moment we ran away from you. We ran into destruction. Holy Spirit, we thank you for effecting this salvation in our lives. Give us the grace to live for you, O oh God, in freedom and peace and joy. Amen.